Hey everybody, Steven Michael here, and let's talk the Canon EOS R, the brand new camera they just announced last night at like 4 a.m. And I'm just gonna jump in to the elephants in the room, the stuff I don't like about it, the stuff I wish Canon would get on board with, but just hasn't yet. And that is, it has a 4K crop. It has a crop in 4K. That is huge because it is a full frame camera, a full frame mirrorless sensor and it is just got a crop in 4K. Um, the four, and you're only gonna have 30 frames per second in 4K, so no slow-mo. Uh, in uh, HD 1080, you're gonna have 60 frames, and 720, you'll have 120 frames, but frankly, I don't know anybody who's recording anything in or posting anything in 720 anymore. And there is no in-body stabilization. There is no 10-bit 422 internal recording. It's only going to be external. Uh, however, it does uh, support 10-bit 422 external recording through the HDMI, which is awesome. It only has one SD card, so for those of you who like to have a backup, sorry, you're not going to get that backup. And it has a record clip time limit of 30 minutes. It has a record time limit of 30 minutes, and for me, I do a lot of concerts and long-form things, so that's no bueno. <laughs> um, it's gonna have no third-party adapters or lenses for a while, they are just not going to allow it, and the native glass is very expensive. Let's talk price of the camera. The camera is gonna run you $2,300 without a lens, body only, and $3,400 with a kit lens, which is a 24 to 105. So let's talk about the camera, starting with the front, the, the, new, the mount, which is the same 45 millimeter inner diameter, but it's got a shorter flange distance, so the lens is actually gonna sit closer to the sensor, which means you're gonna get better image quality, and it's gonna have 12 electrical contacts, which means it's going to be fast. It, of course, has the 30.3 megapixel full-frame CMOS sensor. The ISO range is, is 100 to 4,000, uh, 4, and the low-light EV negative six at f1.2, which means it's gonna be pretty darn good in low light, and that goes up to about 18. It's got a low pass filter in front of the sensor that's gonna help with mulleting and kind of kill some of the sharpness. And of course, you're gonna get the Canon dual pixel CMOS AF detection phase system, which is awesome. Swinging around to the back of the camera, we are gonna take a look at the OLED, which is the OLED viewfinder, which is a 3.69 million dot electronic viewfinder with roughly 100% coverage and the magnification is uh, 0.71 times. Now, the EVF on the back is going to be a 3.15 inch, 2.1 million dot very angle touchscreen LCD, and it is made of solid metal. It is rugged, it is sturdy, it's not like the cheap plastic ones like on my GH4, um, so that is super, super awesome. Now one of the bells and whistles I've been talking about on this camera is the new kind of control bar. They've got this swipe bar, kind of like on the new Max. Uh, it's got two buttons on the side and then the swipe bar, which is fully customizable. You can put your ISO, your shutter, whatever you need, you can customize the bar. Uh, this seems kind of more like a trendy thing rather than a useful thing, but we'll see if it catches on. And the side of the camera has, like I said, full HDMI. It has a headphone jack and a microphone jack. And as far as memory cards, it does have the single slot, and you're gonna be using your SD, SDHC, and SDXC memory cards, so that's pretty cool. And of course, it's got things like your sensor cleaning, silent shutter, dust detection, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. The USB connection is a 3.1 terminal, and it's got an LPE6N battery. And, and you're going to also have Canon C-Log inside the camera. So let's talk about the lenses real quickly. The lenses are going to be smaller and um, more robust, and they're gonna be sh uh, just much better uh, because I think what they did was they put the larger, um, they put the larger element in the back of the camera uh, and get, got it closer to the sensor, which is very interesting. And the lenses have this kind of control ring on the front. And not only will you be able to control focus, but you're also going to be able to control like your ISO, your shutter, that's gonna be all be at uh, right at the touch of the lens, uh, which is interesting, but again, seems a little bit more gimmicky because uh, you do have that, that control bar on the back. And I think that's going to be um, 
probably well used to control my ISO and shutter, excuse me, and things like that. Um, so it just kind of seems kind of like a, like a gimmick thing. And of course it does have, from what I hear, it has like some bumps or clicks. So it's not gonna be like a smooth ring, which again, if you're trying to focus, you want a smooth ring. Okay, let's talk about the adapters and then I'll wrap this video up because I've gone on for long enough. Uh, the EF to EOS R adapter is gonna be a hundred bucks and it's gonna support your MF lenses, your EFS lenses and your EF glass. They do make a, a, an adapter that's gonna give you the control ring uh, option for about 200 bucks. There's gonna be an adapter with a drop-in polarizer for about $300. And then I wanna talk about this adapter especially. They're going to have an adapter with this little draw that slides out and has an N variable ND filter inside. And that is super awesome to have the ND filter behind the lens, uh, something you just throw right in the camera. It's essentially gonna make this thing like a little mini uh, C100, but the lens adapter is $400. That's pretty pricey. And again, there's gonna be no third-party stuff for a while. So how do I feel about this? Like I said, it seems like a lot of bells and whistles and some cool, like, small innovations, but they still are not there with the camera. The, if you want full-frame mirrorless and low light, you're gonna go with your Sony. If, you're gonna, if you want long record times and decent low light, you're gonna still go with your Panasonics. Unfortunately, all of these things, the fact that there's a crop, there's no slow-mo, there's no 10-bit internal, the record time, which is huge for me, because like I said, I record a lot of concerts and long-form stuff, and it's gonna be very expensive on top, and I'm gonna to need to buy a $400 adapter. This is just not a, a change for me. I'm definitely gonna be looking more at st either sticking with Panasonic or looking at Blackmagic or Sony, which seems to um, be on the game. Uh, that's it. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think and if you're going to pick one of these up. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.